Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Wayman Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, 47 East Avenue, uh, Temple, Texas, for our Sunday school lesson for this morning, this 11th day of December 2022. Amen. Let's sing a verse of what a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting on what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting um, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting on. And the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set it on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Our Father God, we uh, thank you for you still sitting on your throne in glory, looking down into this world, oh God, and you uh, know what is going on. And Father, we know that you are still in charge of all things, still have all power in your hands, both in heaven and in earth. We thank you now, God, for allowing us to lie down last night and rest from another day's journey and early this morning. We thank you for waking us up, oh God, opening our eyes and we beheld a brand new day a day we've never seen before and one we'll never see again. We thank you, God, for uh, putting a portion of health and strength upon these frail bodies of ours, enabling us to be able to utilize the activities of our bodies and to be able to get up and now have a desire to come into your house early this morning to start off with a Sunday school lesson. Father, we pray now that you allow your Holy Spirit to continue to be with us as he was with us all, all night long and early this morning, oh God, and now you allow us to travel uh, to Wayman, oh God, with uh, your protection and around us, oh God, and now we pray that you allow your Holy Spirit to continue to be with us as we come for this Sunday school lesson this morning. Help us now, Lord, to receive what you have for us. Give us the knowledge and understanding of the scriptures as we read them, that, Father, we'll be able to uh, learn a little bit more and be able better understandable of how great you are and how you desire for us to be more like you. So, Father, we thank you for all who have assembled already, both physically here in the sex in the fellowship hall and those that have joined us virtually. God, we pray now that you continue to open our awareness, that we'll be aware of you working in our lives every step of the way, because we realize, Lord, we didn't get here by ourselves. You had to be with us and had to have your arms upon us, Lord, and enabling us to do the things that we have done. Now, Lord, bless, keep, and protect every uh, church that is open in your name today, that your word may be uh, preached and taught, and Lord, that we may lift up and praise your holy name. Thank you, Father, for uh, those that had a mind to come, but physically some beyond their control, prevented them from uh, arriving at your house this day, Father, but let them know you're in every place. All they have to do is to just look upon you and Lord, have a talk with Jesus and we know everything gonna be all right. So now Lord, we ask that you allow us to say the prayer that you taught your disciples to say. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, welcome everybody on this 11th day of uh, 11th day of December 2022. Man, time is keeps on rolling on. And we thank God for every breath that we take, knowing that uh, he has life in his hands to give and to decide when life uh, is over. Amen. So we thank him for all that he has done, that he's doing, and that he is yet, yet to do. Amen. Our scripture for today, uh, lesson for today is, uh, again, lesson number two. Uh, December 11th, 2022, Zechariah speaks. Lesson scripture, Luke 1, 57 through 80. Our focus a scripture, Luke 1, 57 through 66 and 76 through 79. Amen. Our key verse, you child will be called the prophet of the most high, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, Luke 1 and 76, amen. We see on the uh, printed text, uh, usually on the left side, it has the New Revised Standard, and on the right side, we have the, we usually have the King James, but uh, the print was a little mistakenly, uh, was mistaken, so now uh, the right side is still King James, amen, amen, they just put, uh, NRSV by, but it's uh, you look at the scriptures, it's, it is the King James Version. All right. All righty. Let us responsibly read the uh, lesson uh, scriptures, beginning with verse number 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And they said unto her, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John, and they marveled all. And his mouth was open to the king, as his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all the And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Uh, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high had visited us. Altogether, verse 79. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Amen. Zacharias uh, speaks. Amen. God has a way of doing everything decent and in order. Amen. There's no confusion in what the Lord does. Amen. He makes sure that everybody is aware uh of what what's going to take place so that there will therefore there will not be any any confusion amen and we see now that uh just as he had sent gabriel the angel to speak to uh joseph and tell joseph that uh not to put uh mary away because why because what she was going to experience was the work of god through his holy spirit amen and he told Mary too. So therefore what both Mary and Joseph knew what God was doing. 
Amen. So we have to be careful when somebody come and tell you the Lord told me to say this to you or to tell you this, <laughs> or to do this. Amen. Because it might be something they just want to get off their chest anyway. <laughs> Amen. But as we said last week, how can you tell whether the Lord is talking to you or not? Y'all remember that? Uh, Dr. Keenan said last week, how can you know if God's talking to you? What'd you do? Well, you can tell by what is what the result, what is said or what is done. Amen. God don't tell you to do nothing wrong. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> or to hurt somebody or anything like that. Amen. And so here we find that what? That not only did God send the, able to, uh, the angel to uh, Mary and Joseph, but now he sent them to what? to uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, because he was getting ready now to do a work through uh, Elizabeth, amen. And if you notice, both Elizabeth and Mary were well in age, which means what? It was had to be a miracle from God that would allow both of them to have what? Uh, have a, a baby. Well, Mary was too young and never had a man before. And Elizabeth was what? Well, older which was what, past her, her childbearing days. But whatever God wants to do, he can do it, amen. Whatever man plan or whatever we plan, God can always interrupt it, amen, amen. I'm sure that if anybody that, that have transitioned from this life to the next life would tell you that uh, I wanted to stay, amen. But what, God says it's time. Amen. No matter what you have, no matter who you know, uh, what you're holding on to when God says it's time, what? You got to move. Didn't older people used to say that when God say you got to move, what? You got to move. You got to move. Amen. All right, let's look at uh, our text for today. When we look at the introduction on page 12, it says that Luke, the physician, wrote this book emphasizing the miraculous birth and the restoration of Zachariah's ability to speak. Amen. And so Luke is uh, Luke is the is the writer or the author of, of this. And Luke was a physician, also what he he witnessed, had eyewitness of everything that Jesus was doing uh, doing his ministry. And so he had uh, information. And when you read the book of Luke, you'll find how that Luke many times uh, go more into detail uh, what he is talking about than normally anybody else. Okay. And so here we find that what? He emphasized the miraculous uh, birth, which was what? Which was the birth that uh, Elizabeth uh, was going to have of her son uh, because it was what? It was uh, unheard of for somebody of Elizabeth's age to have a child. Amen. So that's first indicating to let us know that what? God had to be in the mix of it. Huh? Amen. And, and then they talk about what the restoration of Zachariah's ability to speak, because we're going to find that what that Zachariah, when they told him that he, uh, uh, his wife was going to have a child, he was going to have a child, what? He didn't believe it. Amen. He what? He, he, uh, he had doubt as to what he heard uh, from the angel. But what? But God said, uh, the angel told him, said, well, well, now you're going to be uh, unable to speak. Until what? Until the message that the angel gave to him actually came to pass. Amen. What they say is Missouri is the state that people say, what, you got to show me? Uh, <laughs> in order for me to believe, you got to, you got to uh, show me. But remember Jesus told uh, Thomas, say, Thomas, you had to see me in order to believe that what? I died and I rose again. But he said, just think about all the ones coming after you that have not seen, but yet believe. Amen. That's what? Walking by faith. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. We have to step out and trust God for what his word said. We haven't, we haven't uh, seen him, but what? We believe he's coming back. Because why? Because of he say he is. Amen. And record indicates that all he has said he was going to do, he did it, except for the things where what? The time of God has not come yet. So based on what we've heard him say and what has already happened, we believe now that what? That there's a surety that what ha we haven't seen yet, he said, is what? It's going to come to pass just in the matter of time. All right? Normally, babies move in the womb. Huh? Amen. Babies move in the womb. 
Amen. I've never experienced that, but uh, I've heard many of the ladies say, <laughs> I've heard many of the ladies say, oh, he kicked me or she kicked me. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. And so I, it's actually true that, right? They move in the womb. Amen. But look what it says about Elizabeth. It said Elizabeth, baby, leaped. Huh? Leaped in the womb. Amen. It was a, it was a little uh, more uh, to what uh, Elizabeth baby did than what normally happens where well, baby just move in the womb. He, she, he leaped. And when we think about how God was in on this, that what? That the baby that Elizabeth carried now was what? Was uh, extraordinary because it was going to be, he was going to be the, the, uh, the preparer for the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we can kind of assume that the leaping he did and then instead of just a regular moving was what was that he he knew that he was coming to make way for God's son, Jesus Christ, which was what which was a joy to know that what that he had been chosen uh, by God to what to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. Amen. That's something to leap about, isn't it? Amen. That's like we now once we come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That what? That it has caused us to have joy. Amen. I can't go too far into that. We're going to talk about that a little later. <laughs> but what? But it just imagine how that uh, knowing that God is working in your life gives us reason to what? Want to pray. Or it should give us reason to want to praise him. Amen. Amen. Paul said, there's nothing that shall separate me from the love of God. Amen. Which means what? That nothing on this earth should be able to cause us to turn our back on the Lord. Huh? It, why so many things do? <laughs> huh? Amen. Amen. So, but here's a what? After rejoicing that Mary was pregnant with the baby Jesus arrives to what? To Elizabeth. John's birth occurs. Elizabeth must have known her baby uh, birth was called by, was called by God. Amen. Uh, she must have known. And like I say, God doesn't do anything uh, haphazardly. Amen. He makes sure that everything works in order. Amen. And so, yeah, she knew. Uh, the angel, I don't think, didn't tell her, but he told Zacharias. So therefore, Zacharias must have what? Have told her. Amen. And John's calling was confirmed when Zechariah confirms that the baby's name was John. Amen, confirmation. But that's what the angel told him, right? Amen, and he confirmed it because normally, especially when uh, uh, the first son is born, they want to be a junior, right? They want to have a junior. <laughs> Amen, and so, and so therefore what? Uh, God already had uh, preceded uh, his plan to name the baby John Jr. I mean, amen. Huh? Amen. I mean, uh, name him uh, uh, Zachariah Jr. Amen. And so what? So he already knew what? Well, I can't, I can't name after me. So therefore what? I must follow the guidance that God has given us because there's a reason for him to be named John. Okay. All right. And it says that uh, God prepares people for ministry while they are being woven together in their mother's womb. And now we told Jeremiah, while you were in your mother's womb, <laughs> amen, uh, amen, he had already what? Yeah, he had already knew who he was going to be. Amen. Do you think God knew what you was going to be? Or who you was going to be? Huh? <laughs> amen. Which means what? If he knew who he was going to be while we were in our mother's womb, that means what? Before we came, he had already prepared us. Huh? Given us a why is it? That so many people say, well, Lord, you must have had the wrong person. Huh? Or I can't not do what you have called me to do. Why do you think that's so? Amen. Yeah, yeah. Wise person would say, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And many times we try to outweigh God. Huh? Meaning that, well, if we don't do it now, God gonna forget about it. 
<laughs> and therefore, what are you going to let her do something else? Amen. But God never changes. Amen. You can wait all you want to think he's going to change his mind, but what? But he is always going to be the same. Amen. All right. Uh, the first uh, chapters of Luke's gospel tell the stories of two important births. Luke presents the events surrounding the births of John and Jesus uh, that connects them to each other. Amen. Why? It's two different births, two different ladies going to have babies, but what? But God has connected them in a way that what? That, it, that both of them are, are related. Amen. Uh, the angel Gabriel announced an approaching pregnancy and promised birth. Uh, Gabriel first appeared to a priest named Zacharias and prophesied regarding the pregnancy of his wife, Elizabeth. Mm, amen. And Gabriel was busy. And the birth of their son, who was John. Then the angel appeared to Mary and announced that she was highly favored in the eyes of God and that she would give birth to a son. Mm. Mary and Elizabeth were related. When Mary visited Elizabeth, the unborn John leaped in his mother's womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. When Zechariah received Gabriel's uh, revelation regarding Elizabeth's pregnancy, he questioned whether God's promise would come true. Amen. And I'm sure that we have all been in that situation where God has revealed to us something, whether it was through a dream or whether it's through uh, an angel or whomever or whatever he chose to use as his vessel uh, to give us a message that what many times we probably have wondered, would this come true? How can this come to pass? Because we can't see how it's going to happen. Amen. Maybe because the situation we're in, Maybe because we don't think we qualified, but what? But I'm sure many of us is already always uh, somewhere in life thus far have doubted what God has called us to do or told us that we doubt whether it's going to take place or not. Amen. Amen. Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel gave a sign to Zacharias. He would be mute until Gabriel's words were fulfilled. Amen. So what that was, that was a, that was a, a sign to Zechariah that what, that this thing going to take place. Amen. And you'll be able to tell by what? By him not being able to speak. Elizabeth recognized that God was at work in and through her pregnancy. All right. On page uh, 13 in the center, it said, during the nine months of silence, Zechariah had time to think about the fact that without God, even the ability to speak becomes impossible. Amen. Only God could have done that. And uh, I'm sure that once he realized he couldn't speak, he remembered what Gabriel told him. <laughs> Amen. And so what? So I believe that should have enlightened him to now have more belief that what? That Elizabeth was going to have a baby. Huh? Because if, if, the, if Gabriel told him that he wasn't going to be able to speak because of his doubt, until she have it, now what? He see that what? That she's pregnant and that what? And that um, he can't speak. So if God did that to him, as he said he was going to do, then why wouldn't God allow her to have a baby as he said she would have a baby? All right. Uh, before naming the infant, uh, on page 13, uh, under Luke 1, 57 through 64a, it said before on the left side, before naming the infant, they asked Elizabeth what his name would be. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, she's the mom. So, so he said, what you gonna name your son? You know, because, because many times what I think the, the, the mothers already have names before, but <laughs> before once they know they're pregnant, right? Amen. Well, we want to call them this and call them that, uh, you know, amen. And so what? They asked, because it was customary, they asked the lady. I uh, asked Elizabeth, what would her son name? She indicated that it would be John. Amen. Why? Because she already knew what the angel had told Zachariah, what his name, already gave him his name. Uh, and now you know the people. Why are you going to name him John? <laughs> Especially a boy. Why are you going to name him John? You don't have no Johns in your family. Uh, you know, amen, or children. <laughs> amen. Why are you going to name him John? Amen. She was adamant that would be his name. 
Uh, why? Because um, the angel had already told him that that's what the name would be. Amen. Same way Gabriel told Mary and, and Joseph what her son's name would be. His name shall be called Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, because no one in the Zachariah's family had ever been named John, Zachariah was asked to affirm this pronouncement. Now, he was asked, but what? You remember, he can't speak. Huh? Amen. He can't. But see how God had already fixed it up? And what? That uh, Elizabeth already knew it's going to be named John. John uh, Zachariah already knew it's going to be John. And what? And now they asked Elizabeth. She said John. So now they come to come to uh, Zachariah to see if he's going to change it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what? He was a smart person. He was a smart man. Right? Amen. He said what? He said uh, he was unable to speak. He affirmed by writing on a flat piece of a wood what the angel Gabriel said, the boy's name was John. Amen. So he confirmed what Elizabeth had said and what the angel had told him. That is what his name would be John. Uh, during the celebra uh, celebratory moment, Zachariah's voice returned. Now look at it. The angel said what? You're going to be uh, mute. Until what? Until the baby is born. Huh? Amen. And so now what? Now the baby is born and what? The first thing now is what? He's able to speak. Confirms that the angel gave him a message that God was going to do something and what? And that he, had, he was going to see the results of it. Uh, amen. By the confirmation that he had of what the angel had told him. All right. This happened only after Zechariah acknowledged exactly what Gabriel had told him in the temple, which was what? His name shall be called John. Hmm? Amen. Amen. It didn't happen that he was able to speak until what? He acknowledged what the angel told him. Huh? Amen. Many times we be wanting uh, God to do something and we don't want to do what God tell us to do, but we still want God to work for us and we not work for him. Amen. But many times we we put a, a a delay on what God wants to do for us because we don't follow the guidance God gives. Amen. And therefore, what? Therefore, we find that what we uh, many times get upset with God because God didn't answer our prayer. But what we forget, we didn't do what He told us to do. Amen. God will uh, God will will work toward our obedience. Amen. You remember he said that uh, uh, if my people who are, called my, who are called by my name shall humble themselves and do what? <laughs> Amen. They'll humble themselves and pray. And what? Seek my face. Huh? And then he said what? Then he will hear. And then he will answer and he'll heal the land. Amen. That was back in the Old Testament. But what? Do you think that's still a work today? We need much healing in the land, don't we? But what it is, we find people, are, a lot of people are slacked up praying. They don't want to pray. Amen. They don't want to pray. And so what? And so in order for things to get better, we have to what? Do what God says. He already told us what he's going to do. But we got to do something prior to him uh, acting on what he said he's going to do. And that is we got to pray and got to seek his face. Yeah, and turn from what? From our wicked ways. Amen. Which means what? All that got to be done before God going to what? Heal? Heal the land. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Uh, instead of doing that, we find that there's a great falling away from God. Turning their backs on God. Amen. All right. Uh, uh, Luke 1, 64b. 265 on the right side of page 13 say when Zachariah's speech returned amen now look what it say he had been uh mute couldn't speak for how long for nine months right amen for nine months he had been what unable to speak but as soon as uh what God the angel told him was going to take place that she would have a son then what it said he was able to speak amen and, but look what he did. The first thing after he spoke, after he was able to speak, what? He said what? He said a blessing and praise that recognizes complete dependence on God. Uh, 
he praised God after he was able to speak. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who we give praise to first, or who we recognize first, or show respect to first? It's God. Amen. So that's why uh, every, every time we acknowledge a blessings from God, we should be willing to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before we before we do anything else, go call sister, go call friend, what you got, BFF or whatever y'all call. <laughs> say what? Say the first thing we should do is what? Give God praise. Amen. This morning, how many got down and say, Lord, I thank you for this morning? Huh? Amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, you got to, well, I got to hurry up and eat. I got to get dressed. I got to do all this and stuff, but what? But amen. The first thing, what? When we open our eyes, Lord, I thank you because he didn't have to do it. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, so it said the first thing he did, what? When he re speech was returned to him, a blessing and praise that recognizes complete dependence on God. Complete dependence. We can't do nothing without God. I don't care how strong we are, how much we know. <laughs> I don't know who we know. But what? We can't do nothing without God, which means what? We are completely dependent upon God. Amen. All righty. Uh, during the nine months of silence, Zechariah had time to think. We already talked about, about the fact that without God, even the ability to speak becomes impossible. When the people heard Zechariah speak, they witnessed evidence of God's intervention in Zechariah's life. Hmm. God intervened. Amen. Why? Because they thought he was going to be named John. I mean, was going to, amen, was going to be named uh, Zechariah. But what? God intervened and said, no, nah, that's not going to be his name. His name going to be what? Going to be John. Amen. Yes, sir. Can I yes, ma'am. When I believe that at the moment of Zechariah uh, coming to that belief mm -hmm. is when God reacted uh -huh. to that speech. Yeah, yeah. And in our lives, when we uh, make certain mm -hmm. that our minds are determined to serve God, yeah, yeah. then that's when God. the lessons start going. Amen. And amen. a lot of time, I don't why. <laughs> and this was, you know, you haven't done. Yeah. So this is my uh, Zechariah disbelief. Uh huh. So I take his speech away from him. Yeah, yeah. So in that nine month period of time, he had all the time to think about. It. Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt he was planning. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> my speech I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say this. Yeah. And that's what we do in this Christian life. Amen. We make all of these promises of what we're gonna do, mm -hmm. but God has to intervene in our yeah. by some means. Yeah, yeah. And stop us. Uh huh. And then when we hope and we're able to look around, we can't do nothing about it. <laughs> yeah. But then when that time comes, Amen. He Amen. Get in a hurry. Yeah. Like he's talking about wise person. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You gonna still do the same? Yeah. Do the same thing over there. Amen. So I believe that the moment that we really believe, uh -huh. and that's what Solomon was saying in and. and uh, second chapter seven, uh -huh. notice that God didn't, he told him, told us what to do, yeah. But if, when he said turn, turn. to the wicked ways, uh -huh. then, then, yeah, so that's what he had to, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, when, when that moment of belief, Lord, I mean, no doubt he was saying silently, <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, was able to speak, uh -huh. and that's the way God deals with us. I believe with this, amen, amen. You remember. When Jesus was on the cross, he was in between two thieves. One of them still was a thief. <laughs> still doubted God. But what? As soon as that other one, as, as Dr. King said, as soon as that other one said, remember me, when I come into paradise, what did he say? This day. Huh? Right then when what? When he acknowledged Jesus Christ. So as she said, once we acknowledge Jesus Christ and we do what God tells us to do, then what? Then God opens up the blessings. Amen. And so, therefore, it's an indication to all of us that what? If you want to be blessed, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. do what God says. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, on number 13, on the number, uh, number one, it says on the right side, how do you respond after God heals you or someone you know after a lengthy illness? Mm -hmm. How do you respond? 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why? Because that's what we just talked about, right? The first thing uh, Zechariah did once he was able to speak was what? He gave God praise. Huh? So the first thing we should do, <laughs> amen. Well, well, once we recognize what God has done for us, and what? We give God thanks. Amen. Give God thanks. All right. Everybody else can wait, but what? Give God thanks first. Amen. Seek ye first kingdom of God and his righteousness. What happened? All other things will be added unto you. But we got to seek him first. Amen. And we got to acknowledge him and what? And to receive the blessing that he has for us. Number two said, what thoughts cross your mind when you are praising God? When you're praising God, why are you praising him? What thoughts, what you're thinking about when you're praising him? How good he's been, right? Amen, amen. Well, that's what brings about the praise, right? If you never acknowledge or recognize God is intervening in your life and is blessing you, then what? More than likely, you're not going to give him no praise and not going to thank him. But what? Once you acknowledge God is the one that's doing all things for you, then what? Then the first thing you do is what? Lord, I thank you. <laughs> amen. Lord, I thank you. You know, I got, I got to the point... Uh, uh, years ago that uh, every time I pass a, a car on the side of the road, I say, Lord, I thank you. And that could have been me. Now it just automatically comes. Wherever I am, I see someone, someone crowd. Lord, I thank you. That could have been, could have been me. Amen. But he keeps me rolling on. <laughs> Amen. All right. So what we think about God all the time. Why? Because he's always doing something for us. Every, every second, every but we take what? He's always doing something, which ain't what? If we want to be uh, uh, fair and honest with him, what? We give him thanks. Amen. You don't have to wait until you get to church to say thank you. You don't have to wait until you're able to get on your knees to say thank you. Amen. What? He made it so we can give him thanks anywhere. Amen. Even though they what? They have taken, taken uh, prayers out of school and out of a lot of other places and stuff like that in public, but what? But they don't know whether you're praying or not. <laughs> They are thanking God. Well, you can thank him anywhere. Amen. He's the one that understands whatever you say, when you say it. Amen. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. What neighbor? Amen. Thank you for thanking enough for us. To bless us in the ways that he is blessing us. Amen. All right, under uh, Luke 65b to 66, John Burt created quite a bit of uh, excitement. Uh, well, one, because why? Because Elizabeth had him and he was, she was old. Uh, amen, a miracle. And then again, why? Because now they realize that what? That uh, Zachariah don't have a junior. <laughs> so what? So therefore, it was a sign because why you named him John? Amen. Because what? They were obedient to what God had told them to do. Amen. People talked. Amen. People gonna talk one way or the other. Isn't that right? Whether you do what the law says or you don't, they gonna well, you shouldn't do what the law told you to do. Amen. The man one telling you don't do it, or you shouldn't do this. But what? When you don't do it, it's something else. You should do what the law told you to do. Amen. Uh, they talked and they spread the news through Judea. Amen. It's amazing how, how news spreads, don't it? Amen. Sometime before, right after it happened, as soon as it happened, it's already gone. Amen. People wondered what kind of person John would become. Hmm. Amen. What kind of person John would become? He had to be somebody special because the angel visited uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth. So it had to be somebody special for God to send his angels to them and let them know you're going to have a son and then gave him what the name going to be. All right. Amen. They knew something spectacular had occurred. They knew man didn't do it. So it had to be God intervention. Amen. But they did not fully understand what. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do you have to really fully understand in order to believe what the Lord is doing? Huh? No, nah, that's what faith is all about. It 
Amen. So what? So they 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 saw or they knew something had happened, but what? They did not fully understand. All right. Uh, 76 to 79. After blessing the most high God, that was the first thing he said after what? He was able to speak again. He thanked and blessed God. After he did that, Zechariah then prophesies and gives praise to God for what will be. Mm -hmm. Now he, he realizes that what? The baby John now is going to be somebody special for God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't know who God going to use for his purpose. Uh, that's why we should never cast nobody out. Amen. But what? But he's given all of us the ability to do something for him. Uh, but what is the deciding fact of what is done or not? He's given all of us a gift and ability to do something for him that his name can be glorified. But what is the deciding factor whether God's work get done to us or not? We are. No. He gives it to us, but what? But it's up to us whether we do it or not. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know what? Many times we don't want to do what God wants us to do. Amen. But what? That don't say God did not prepare us because as we said earlier, what? While we were in the mother's womb, God already know what he created us for. But once we come out of the womb and get to the age that what well, we are able to make decisions and choices, then what? Then the choice we make will determine whether we will fulfill God's purpose or not. Mm -hmm. Amen. You remember when uh, uh, God told Abraham he was going to have a son and Sarah was going to have a son? Uh, but Sarah didn't believe because why? I'm old. <laughs> Amen. But what? But then she tried to help God to fulfill the, the blessing that God had said uh, Abraham would have through his son. So what she said, well, we're gonna make, we're gonna help you to get a son. Uh, but what? That didn't change God's mind of who the blessing was gonna come to. Amen. So, what? so therefore, what he still had to go through, and Abraham and Sarah had to have a son in order to the, for God's purpose to be fulfilled through the son that they were gonna have together. All right. Uh, Zechariah says John will be a prophet, preparing the way for the Lord, the Messiah. Uh, amen. Now, after he received his voice again, he what he. First thing was thank God. And now he's telling them the results of what God had done to what? To the birth of his son, John. He said, What? He's going to prophesy the coming of the Messiah. Hmm? Amen. Because you remember the people was asking, What John going to be like? Now, what God is revealing to Zechariah to tell him what he's going to be. He's going to be a prophet, preparing the way. For the coming of the Lord or the Messiah. Huh? So now what? The people know. <laughs> Amen. The people know. John's ministry fulfills Isaiah's prophet. Hmm? And there's going to be one what? Crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Hmm? All right. Who's preparing? Now that was Jesus coming the first time, right? Uh, coming. Okay. Now who's preparing the way for his second coming? John not here now. Who's preparing the way for his second coming? Who? All right. Who? Anybody who testified what? Jesus is coming back. Amen. He don't have to be a preacher. <laughs> uh, no. Amen. The preacher might not tell you that Jesus is coming back. Because <laughs> he, he, he or she knows they're not right either. So what? Why are they going to tell you Jesus is coming back when they know they, they're not ready for him? Uh, <laughs> amen so what so therefore what therefore you know we have to what we have to be able to what and all who acknowledges what of uh, what he said about i'm going to prepare but what when i do i'm coming back so if we believe that whomever it is you know, whether you're a preacher or a lay person or whatever what if you believe that then what you tell you got the right to tell somebody what jesus is coming back Hmm? Amen. Amen. 
All right? You know, you go to many churches there, you don't hear nothing about Jesus. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. 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 That was a story that I told once said what? Said that the man uh, was, uh, went to the church and said the whole service, he didn't hear nothing about Jesus. Nobody called Jesus' name. So one day they had a fire in the church. Huh? <laughs> said the fire, a fire in the church. So everybody came running to, to see what the fire was about. And when they got out there, then somebody was hollering, uh, Lord have mercy. And said so that's the only time they heard uh, about Jesus when what? When the fire was in the church burning and everybody came out and they heard it outside the church. They heard it in the church. Hey, Amen. Isn't that something? Hey, Amen. What? Well, when we go to church, we expect what? To meet Jesus there uh, for what? To be in his presence in his house. Huh? Hey, Amen. That's a little uh, foretaste of what's yet to come. <laughs> All right. Okay. And so it says that what? Uh, Zachariah's words advised of God's uh, different plan to use John as the voice of one crying out, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Amen. Uh, make straight here in the desert a highway for our God. Amen. Make straight uh, in the desert a highway in the desert. For what? For God. Bible tells us there are two pathways we can take in life. One is a broad way, but where it leads to? Yeah, everybody, a lot of people going that way, but what? It leads to destruction. But then there's another way, which is what? A straight and narrow path that leads to what? What that straight and narrow leads to? It leads to eternal life. Amen. Why? Because you got to give up some things. The broad way, what? You can take anything you want to take and go down that way. But what? That straight and narrow, you can't go down there any kind of way. Huh? Amen. If you want to see Jesus, you got to shed off some stuff. <laughs> got to get rid of some stuff. Amen. All right, let us close out. On page 15, it says, uh, in the center, technology, automation, or medical advances can blind us to God's wonders. Mm -hmm. Why? Because so many people are caught up on the technology and they don't believe that God doing the things he's doing. Huh? But who's enabling the technology to work? <laughs> so anyway, you look at it, well, God is still the one that was involved in everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Under that life application, television and internet gives glimpses into things that we often could not see. This includes childbirth and surgeries. Hmm. Amen. Uh, 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 a lady can go to the doctor now, pregnant and what? Find out what the baby gonna be, what sex the baby is. Uh -uh. But what? But I don't care how many doctors, how many uh, no technology and whatever they invent, they can't put that baby in a, in a womb. Who is it? Got to be God, right? Amen. Uh, today's lesson reminds us that humans' best and greatest efforts are limited. Why? Because God still holds control. And therefore, we are limited to what we can do. All right. Only God can place babies in the womb and ensure their safe delivery and subsequent life. Like Zachariah, we should give praise to God as the one on whom we totally depend. In him... We live, move, have our being. That was in Acts 17 and 28. In our summary, uh, John's birth assures us that God's promises are certain. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said it, and it happened just like he said. Zechariah let all who could hear know that his very being and abilities are God-dependent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, do you believe that our testimony of our dependence on God could be uh, a blessing and a help to somebody else that will cause them to depend on God because of what we say? Uh, how can they tell whether you're sure or not of what you're saying about, or you just pulling their leg that you depend on God? How can they be assured what you're saying you believe yourself? 
<laughs> uh, amen. But you're setting an example. You got to set an example. Amen. If you trust God, then what? And you tell them to trust God, then what? They got to see you trust God. Amen. amen. If you're telling them to do what God says and they see you're not doing it, then what? They don't believe you. Believe it yourself. Mm. Amen. So therefore what? Uh, we have to live what we speak. Huh? Amen. Because what we speak have more impact and influence on what we say. Is that true? Amen. Amen. People here living at you talk all day long, but what? They're still looking to see what you're going to do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Huh? How you can tell somebody to give when you're not giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. That's true. Yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't speak your light shining. You got to what? Let it shine. <laughs> but it got to shine. Amen. All right, any questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. But I, I noticed the women during Elizabeth time, how caring they were and, and you know, being around her after she had the baby, I mean, when she became impregnated, that the good news and all of this, mm -hmm. you let a woman pass age to <laughs> conceive. Yeah, yeah. That would be the worst talk. It will, yeah. You know, I mean... And it, it's amazing how the times have changed. Mm -hmm. Back then, they rejoiced. They told the good news. Yeah, yeah. If mm -hmm. that were to happen today, that would yeah. be gossip. That would be man thing, day, yeah. You know, of, you know, and then again, about Zachariah and Joseph. Let's mm -hmm. look at their comparison. Mm -hmm. Zachariah didn't believe. Uh huh. Yeah. Joseph was ashamed. Yeah, yeah. Because That's he true. knew that there was nothing going on. Uh huh. And what would the people say that this? As far as wife showing up so pregnant. pregnant, yeah. So I mean, these are things that we have to be mindful of in this life. You know, mm -hmm. no man. If and I use myself, if I had a bit of that mind, if I were to to uh, conceive, mm -hmm. and you know, he knows that. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that would be Uh huh, yeah. But, but Joseph's uh, concern was that, you know, this is going to be embarrassing. Amen. Whereas Zechariah just let out. Yeah, yeah. Just didn't believe. Amen. Amen. Just in Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you. All righty, and the thought to remember, God's faithfulness will lead us to praise. God's faithfulness will lead us to praise. Amen. God bless you. God keep you in our prayer. Thank you both uh, virtually joining us, and thank you for physically joining us. Amen. Let us prepare for our worship service at 10 a.m. All righty. Our hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand. All right. Mispa, may the Lord watch between the when we are absent, one from the other. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for joining us virtually. We look forward to you in a few minutes.